Praise be to God. My name is Washua Mwangi, and I'm born again this afternoon. I am a son in the house. Amen. And today I'm excited because it is another season that the Lord God is here. And he is here to set us free. He is here to cause us to mount up to our destinies. And as I said last time, we are leaving nobody behind. Amen. We are leaving nobody behind, including our online viewers. As we mount up, we are mount together with you because you are associated to us. Our theme for 2021 is mounting up. And our mom, Pastor Ares, last month taught us on how we acquire wings so that we can be able to mount up. But I want us to submit to ourselves this afternoon that we can have wings. But if we do not make use of those wings, then they are useless. Amen? You know, a chicken and a duck have wings. But do they use them? We only use them to eat them. So be careful that your wings do not become food for somebody. Uh, media people, give me Colossians 2, 14 to 16. And as we read this, I want to tell your neighbor, get excited. Get excited. Not because of anything, but because of Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible says in second, the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. And I want us to read this with faith and liberation. I want us to read together. Having wiped out the hard writing of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it, having disarmed principal. Tell your neighbor it was nailed on the cross. He disarmed the authorities. He we are still talking to our neighbors. He disarmed the authorities and the powers. So they have no power over us. What is a code? A code is a system of rules about how people should behave or how something must be done. A code will not allow access to information unless you understand the code combination. A regulation is a rule or directive and is maintained by an authority. The Bible in the verse we have read clearly states that Jesus did two things. Hallelujah. He dismantled the code. Say he dismantled the code. So the code no longer starts against us. And number two, the authorities that were making sure that the court starts were disarmed. Hallelujah. And the power therein was taken away from them. Praise be to God. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 27, 51. Matthew 27, 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two, two, from top to bottom, and the earth quacked, and the rocks were spread. When the Lord Jesus Christ hung on that cross, and for three hours it was darkness, one of the results that came out of that is a cutting in the hurry of holies was broken into two, giving you and me access to God. And remember, I told you, unless you understand the combination of a code, you cannot get access to any information.
salvation. And one of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ as he died on the cross of Calvary was to make sure that you and I can get access to the information of heaven. Why? Because information reparates us. It is until you know something, then you are set free. It is until you get that information that was kept away from us, then we shall not be set free. The Bible says you will know the truth, and it is the truth then that you know that sets us free. When we did not know Christ, there was a code, there was a system that opposed us, our culture, our gender dictated, religion dictated, our background dictated. The Bible says that there was an authority that regulated the system and a directive that dictated the far you and I can reach because we were not allowed to access some information. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, picked all those things that opposed us, all those things that stood against us, and he nailed them on the cross of Jesus, and that set me and you free to become all that God ordained us to ever become. Praise be to God. So from today, I want you to understand that no hell, no culture, no religion, no background has authority to dictate how far you can go. Tell your neighbor, we are mounting up. We are mounting up. Give me Genesis chapter 1 verse 20 to 22. This is what the Bible says in the book of Genesis. Then God said, Let the waters bowed with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. 21. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded, and according to their kind, not that, and every winged bird according to its kind, not that, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. Praise be to God. When God was creating every creature, we were created according to our own kind. And birds were created to their own kind. And they were meant to be flying in the air. But do we have chicken flying in the air? Do we have ducks flying in the air? Ferex, give me the creep. That is what birds were meant to be doing. Flying above the earth. Give me the next one. Pastor Beatrice Uko. I've given you a secret. When she comes to visit you, that is her favorite. That is a chicken. That chicken is also supposed to be above the root happened to chicken and ducks and all those things that you love eating. They were all meant, thank you, Ferex. They were all meant to be frying birds. But because man, me and you, we got tired of keeping on hunting them on the air. And you know, then we didn't have guns. You know that, eh? Or to me, what David used to kill Goriath. 
So it was a very tedious way of harvesting what? Birds to feed on. So what did man do in his wisdom? I want you to go and do the research. He domesticated them. He picked them, put them in cages, and taught them not how to fry. So the first generation did not fry. When they hatched the other chicks, did the chicks see their mothers frying? No. So where are they going to learn how to fry? Nowhere. Praise be to God. Birds have two characteristics. Number one, never forget this. They have wings. All birds have wings. And wings were not meant to be for food. They were meant to give them the ability to fry. Number two, every bird has an ability to fry up. But as I said, may Man has kept on modifying the, 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 the animals that he wants to eat because of his selfish. The difference between a chicken and a nigger or any other frying bird is that chicken roast its ability to fry, but it didn't lose its wings. I want to tell your neighbor, you may not be frying today, but I am here to remind you that your wings can still fry. Hey! The devil cannot remove the deposit of God in me. He can't. So that's the wings. But he can confuse me enough to believe that I cannot fry. But today, the 27th of February 2021, the Lord Jesus Christ is in the house. And what he came to do today, he came to restore our ability to fly. Hallelujah. Shekera Baba Zaya. When John, Peter and John in Acts chapter 3, 5 to 6, as they were walking into the temple that day, they found a cripple. And the cripple begged for money. Peter and John. So he gave them his attention. Expecting to receive something from them. This afternoon I am praying to every lady in the house. And to every person watching us online. That you are going to lift your eyes up to the Lord. And give him your attention. Because things are about to change this afternoon. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have ray. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Arise and walk. I am saying this afternoon, I have nothing of my own. But I kept carrying to have God. And he is saying, Oh dear eyes, start flapping your wings. Because today, I am restoring your ability to fly. That day, that cripple, I don't know how many years he had sat there at the beautiful gate. But that day, as Peter and John were walking around, because they were carrying the Savior, hey, his ability to walk was restored. He was not given a coin, but his ability to use his rags was restored that day. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't know which area you are looking restoration. I better to do that thing that the devil has been telling you that you can do. Today, the Savior is in the house. If you only lift your attention to him, hey, if only you will lift your attention to the Savior, restorations are going to take place today. In this house, on this altar, restorations are taking place. The power, the ability to flap our wings so that we can take off will be restored today if you believe it. Hallelujah. So what are the, the few things? I will not tell
tell you how many so that if I don't finish, you will not know. So I want us to look at a few things that causes us not to flap our wings and fly. Tell your neighbor, we have the ability to run to exercise our wings. Talk to your neighbor. Tell them today, our ability to fly is being restored. I want to remind you, the devil cannot take your wings away. The deposit of God in you, he cannot remove it. He may have drained it. But I came to remind you and myself that what God wired me to become, mm, what God wired me to achieve, the purpose of God in my life, the devil cannot take it. The only thing he can do is to convince me not to use the ability. Number one, one of the things that takes our, our ability to fly or to flap our wings is fear. Our main text was from the book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 27 to 30. Whoever is doing the projections, good. Matthew Matthew 17, 27 to 30. Nevertheless, rest you have fed them to go to the sea. Is this what you are looking Where Peter is walking on water. Let me, let me tell you what it says. This is when Jesus Christ has sent the, the, the crowd away. He goes away into, to pray alone. And then he's walking on water towards the disciples in the sea. And they thought he was a ghost. But Peter recognizing Jesus Christ, he got so excited. This is Jesus. And he told him, I want to come where you are. Remember, this is water. And so Jesus told him, Come. Come. And Peter confidently, because he knew who Jesus was, stepped out of the boat and started walking on water. But the Bible says, then he saw the storm and he was afraid. And he started sinking. One of the reasons... Why we will not be able to flap our wings and mount up to where God wants us to get in your career, in your business, in ministry, in marriage, it is fear. And fear, according to me, it is an emotion that paralyzes and makes you motionless. Because I can tell you, friends, fear can ground you down completely. Just like Peter, we fear to fail before we begin. Peter looking at the storm, he wondered, can I be able to go through this storm without sinking? And remember, this were new grounds for Peter. He has been a fisherman for a very long time. He had never walked on water. The best thing Peter knew was to swim. And I'm looking at traders this afternoon who are so comfortable in what they know that they are fearing to step out of the boat because they are thinking, shall I be able to walk on water I have never tried? Shall these storms finish me? I want to tell you something. Every time you step out to do something big or small, expect challenges because they will come. And why challenges come? They don't come to finish us. They come to make us strong. If only Peter knew that if he walked on that water, he would have been the first man apart from Christ to have done it. But the enemy would 
would want to tell us. Washo. Who? Kinagop. Wakama wage theye. Who has ever done what you are thinking of doing? Who has ever tried to do the things you are doing? And then what do I do? Before I even begin, then I have failed. But I want to tell you these friends. We have to fight fear at all costs. Because I will promise you today, every time you step out, the storms will come. The mountains will be so big. The forest will be so deep. And the darkness will be so dark that you will touch it. But I came here today to remind you, if only you give the attention to the Savior, he will carry you to where he is. And your fear will be gone. The song we have just sung says, because I am a child of God, then I am not a slave of fear. So if there is anything that has of impact, we have to fight as a demon called fear. Praise be to God. And we do not fight from a point of failure. We fight from a winning point. I keep on telling people, even Jesus feared the cross. He was God. But even him, he feared the cross. And at the same he told his father, take this cup away from me. But if it is your will, then I'm ready to face the cross. So fear is okay. Being afraid is okay. But submitting to the fear is the problem. And so today I came to remind ourselves, we will look at fear on the eye and tell it. I am well endowed to face what I have come out to do. Praise be to God. You are endowed enough to maintain your marriage. You are endowed enough to be that career woman. You are endowed enough to be the CEO. You are endowed enough to fight that sickness. You are endowed enough to make sure your children get to where they ought to get. Praise be to God. Number two. Losing focus. The moment Peter shifted the focus from who had called him to the storm, he started sinking. The moment we lose focus on what we want to achieve, then we lose our ability to achieve it. Before I go on, I want to say a very personal thing. You know, sometimes we preach and we think that we are just preaching. Because when you remain focused on an issue, when you remain focused on a project, I can assure you, results will come. I started doing my CPAs. In 1997, 1990, when I was like a small girl, my sister Rea came to our house and enrolled for CPS, did them with a record time of three years and cleared. You want to know when I finished? You want to know when I finished? 2011. But when Rea is writing CPS, Haponyuma had I finished in three years. I don't know how many years it took me. 1997 to the year 2011. But I had one thing in mind. One day, they have to call me CPA Washo. Buona Sifiwe. So when we lose our focus, we lose the ability to achieve anything. Because sometimes the enemy will start telling you, do you know how much it will cost you? It is okay. 
fight the distractions. Nehemiah is told to go back to Jerusalem to do the wall. And all sorts of battles arose. But Nehemiah knew what he wanted. He had a focus on the wall of Jerusalem. He knew he had to remove the shame. And he was going to do it at any cost. So he decided, I am not going to be distracted. I am only going to change the strategy. So during the day they would work. And at night they became the warriors. To dead DOIs, hear me and hear me good. Whatever it is that you have purpose to do, don't lose the focus. When the battles come, change the strategy. Paul knew he had been called to go and preach to the Gentiles. Through persecution, through jailing, and name it, anything that Paul came through. But every time Paul remembered, I had been called to go and minister to the Gentiles. In jail, he decided, I cannot reach them, but I can reach them through the letters. When battles come, don't change the focus. Change the strategy. Amen. Number three. Wrong identity. Tell, ask your neighbor, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? When you are not able to identify yourself correctly, then we are going to call you all sorts of names. And if you are not careful, you may take those names. My grandfather was called Gedeye. Don't ask me what that name means. I have never understood. I have asked all the Maasai whether they have that name. They do not know. But we grew up knowing that was our grandfather's name. Imagine it was not his name. His name was Mongai. I discovered it when he was already dead. Somebody just called him a nickname and it became? Why? Because he had refused to identify himself. I done to identify yourself correctly. And our identity comes from God. Our identity comes from God. And remember, your purpose is tied to your identity. As long as you don't know who you are, you cannot be able to fulfill destiny. Give us Isaiah 45 verse 4. Isaiah 45 4. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you. The King James Version says, I have surnamed you. So if I were to write my name correctly, it would read like this. Washo, Kamau, Mwagi, Jehovah. Because the Bible is telling us, you and I have been named by God himself. So if I are you to and ask God, Jehovah God, when you are seated on the throne, what do you call me? I can assure you, there is a name that Jehovah God calls you. Because the Bible says, the name has proceeded from his mouth. And some of you have been called very beautiful names. But because your mother called you Nyakerario. Your mother called you bitterness. You keep on projecting bitterness. Because your mother called that funny name. You keep on projecting that. Today I pray 
that you can go back to the creator and ask him, Daddy, what do you call me? I will not be telling you what my name is. And once you know your name, then you can be sure nothing will stand in your way. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It is so paramount to know who you are. Quickly, the other thing that causes us not to mount or to know, to be able to flap our wings is our culture, our background, and our traditions. Give us Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. The Bible says, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down and many such things that you do. We all come from a culture. We all come from a background. We all come from a tradition. And if we are not careful, we will listen to those backgrounds. We will listen to those cultures. And they will keep on telling you, women don't do this. Women don't go here. Women don't eat this. Women don't say this. Am I speaking to somebody? One time, I, twice I have stood against my culture. Very confidently. And one time I was told, you cannot have children. Hey, today I'm a mother of four. Yes, they told me, you can't, have, you can't do this and get children. I told them, I will not do it and I will get children. When I went to, to take dowry to my, mother, to my father, you know, I keep on saying I'm a son. So I went home before my husband and I told my father, Daddy, I want you to hear and hear this. Hallelujah. There will be no beer brought, whether in or in bottles. My uncle hit the roof, came back. I told him, you can hit it again and come back. But in this house, as long as it is my dowry being brought, there will be no beer and no envelope for the men to go and drink the beer. Am I still around? Yes. Because culture can cost you never ever to get where God intended you to be. Your background, where you are coming from. Because sometimes you're thinking, oh, beautiful idea. But washo. The idea is very good, but culture has conditioned us to start thinking in a certain way. But I came to remind us that we belong to the culture of heaven. We belong to the lineage of Jesus Christ. And the lineage of Jesus Christ tells me I can fly to the highest level that I want ever to become. Praise be to God. I don't know, some of us come from very, very back, bad backgrounds. And every time you want to step out of the boat, you remember. You want to go and do something, you remember. You want to go and minister, you remember. I came to remind ourselves that Isaiah 43, 18 to 49, we will not read. It is reminding us, forget the former Things. See, I am doing a new thing. Won't you perceive it, daughters of impact? Won't you? Won't you perceive what the Lord is doing? Forget your background. It is called yesterday. We have a whole future to ourselves. Praise be to God. When to break every shackle, every chain of our culture, every shackle, every chain of where we are coming from and know that we are a new creation because when the Lord Jesus died on the cross, remember he carried the codes. He carried everything that they said we can do and he nailed it on the cross of Jesus Christ and then he said, wash out you can become all that I created you to become. 
finery. Vision and destiny, friends, Rick. And if we are not careful, that which the Lord told you to do, it will rick and rick and then it will die and we will bury it. Run to press your visions and your dreams and your destinies in the right hands, in the right mind, so that they can protect them. Run not to share your visions and your dreams when they are still very low. Joseph made that grievous mistake. When he dreamt, he got so excited. And he ran to his parents and his brothers. And he told them, this is what I saw. Mistake. Ask the Lord. Give me people that I can share my visions and my dreams with so that they can protect it. Esther knew this too well. And when he was told that the Jews are going to be killed, he knew who to talk to. He told Mad Mordecai, go tell the Jews that three days we're going to pray and fast. And me and my girls here in the state house, we are going to do the same. Because he knew this vision, this dream has to be preserved. When Daniel was called by the king, and he knew the assignment ahead of him was tough. He went back to the house to his friends and he told them, pray for me. Whom are you sharing your visions and your dreams with? Who are you telling what the Lord has said? Some people when you go to share, they will mock you. Because they don't believe you can hear from God. Because they have known the house girl. They have known the housewife. Hey. Praise be to God. God will separate you from some people. Not because they are bad. But because they will not be able to handle you in the next level. And when I mean separation, I don't mean physical. God will just cause you not to share. You know, we have this tendency, especially when we have employed house girls. And God has lifted them up. And they have opened a shop. And then God lifts them and lifts them. And you have no choice but to go and buy a dress from their shop. We have this tendency to tell the friends, this used to be my house girl. Hallelujah. Thank you. She used to. She used to. When God starts separating you, take the separation and take it well. Because they are not bad people. They are good. Joseph shared it with his family. But they could not be able to handle what was inside Joseph. So it doesn't mean that if I'm separated, it's because those people are bad. Mm -mm. Where God is taking me, where God is taking you, they will not be able to handle it. I have been everything in this life. I've been a housewife for many years. I've been a hawker for several years. And in this church, I've been a nasha. So even some of you, when you're looking at me, you're thinking, you preacher, I'm a nasha. Ho! Hello! Hello! Let's run to embrace seasons. So that when that other sister is lifted, be the preserver. Praise be to God! Because destiny and visions do what? They reek. Ask God to give you destiny helpers who will walk with you so that you can preserve the vision and the dream that God gave you. Why? Because every dream God gives you, every vision gives you, it has beyond you. It has to be bigger than you because it is generational. 
So you need the right people to preserve it to fulfillment. Praise be to God. And as we come to the end of this, I want you us to understand that today, praise be to God, Jehovah is here to take our fear and our doubt. Jehovah is here to refocus us. Jehovah is here to remind us that our cultures and our traditions were nailed on the cross of Jesus. The Lord is here today to bring to us destiny helpers. Oh, who will walk with us so that we can preserve the vision and the destiny. And when that happens, we can be able to flap our wings and fly to where God wants us to go. I want us to start up. But all those things I have said today are good and beautiful. But I want to submit to ourselves that those four things can only happen if we are able to read the word of God. If we are able to immerse ourselves in prayer. If we are able to immerse ourselves in the right fellowship to the honor and to the glory of God. How will you know who you are if you do not study the Bible? How will God give you your name if you don't spend time with him in prayer? And for a moment I want you to go before God and tell God today, I lift my attention to you God so that you can restore my abilities. Go before God, tell God, restore my abilities to pray. Restore my abilities to keep faith. Restore my ability to maintain hope. Restore my ability to tarry in prayer. Restore my ability to stand to the world and to hear from you, God. For Father, we honor you. Today we bless your holy name. And like the creep of the beautiful gate, Lord, we lift up our attention to you, Jehovah God. Oh, that you may release divinity to us. That you may release the power that raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Oh, that God, you will restore our abilities, Lord. Where the enemy convinces us that we cannot do it, God. Today, in Jesus' name, we lift up our faces to you, Lord. And we pray, God, restore. Restore us today. Restore our purity study. Restore us, O oh God. Hore Kashenderabasaya. Hore Keterabasayanta. That which you have battled. That which you have fought. The Lord is saying, Lift your face to me. And now we restore it. That ability. That tenacity to pray. That tenacity to fight. The Lord is releasing it to us. To the honor and to the praise of his name. Father, we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe.